Hi, welcome to Thermodynamics Lab. Today we will perform art experiment number one. Title of art experiment is to calibrate the Borden pressure gauge using dead weight tester. Lines calibration and what is its importance. Then we'll discuss types of zero errors that includes both positive and negative errors. Thirdly, we will discuss Pascal's law, one basic law that deal in pressure transfer through fluids and its implications in daily life like hydraulic brakes, hydraulic jacks and hydraulics lifts. On fourth, we study what is burden pressure gauge and what is its construction and working principle. Then we will forward toward our procedure and apparatus that we will use for this particular experimentation. At the end, we will note down results in the observation table. Calibration and its importance International Bureau of Weights and Measures Define calibration as documented comparison of the measurement from device to be calibrated against a traceable reference device. The reference standard may be also referred as a calibrator. Now when we talk about calibration, we are referring to a comparison between two instruments. Put simply, calibration is the process of comparing the measured value from an instrument under calibration with a reference or standard. Calibration must be performed periodically to test the validity of performance of device or system. In this slide, we will discuss what is the importance of calibration and why we actually perform calibration. There are several facets of calibration but in general, calibration is important in these three key areas. Number 1. Calibration for measuring equipment ensures that your quality controlled processes are accurate. Number 2. Minimization of any measurement uncertainty by ensuring the accuracy of test equipment. Number 3. Calibration quantifies and controls error or uncertainties within measurement processes to an acceptable level. In this slide, we will discuss what are the different types of zero error, that includes positive error, and negative error, and how we can eradicate those errors from our measurements. First is positive error. An instrument has positive error, when it shows larger measurement than the actual measurement. To calculate how much positive error the instrument has we will take the difference between, measured value and actual value. To remove the errors from the reading, we will make error correction which is made by subtracting positive error from the measured value. For the second type, an instrument has negative error when it shows smaller measurement than the actual measurement. To calculate negative error, we will calculate the difference between a measured value and actual value, which will give us the value of negative error. In this case, correction is made by adding negative error to measure value. This next slide demonstrates how these zero errors occur in instruments by the taking the example of the screw gauge. If you see in most left picture, the zero of main scale of screw gauge coincide with the zero of circular scale. That means that reading measured through this instrument will have no zero error. On the other hand, if you look at the center figure, you will observe that zero of the main scale is above the zero of circular scale. It means it has positive error because it will give us measure value greater than the actual value. Same as the case for the picture on right but now, the zero of the main scale is below the zero of circular scale. That means it will have negative error and it will give a measured value less than the actual value. Now we will move toward Pascal's law and what are its implications. Pascal's law states that the pressure applied to a fluid in a closed container is transmitted equally to all points in the fluid and act in all directions of the container. Pascal's law is applicable to both solids and liquids. The mathematical representation of the law is as follows. F is equal to the product of pressure transmitted in cross-sectional area. If you look at the figure, you will see one typical application of this law that can be found in most automotive repair shops that have a lift. Basically, air from an air compressor is applied to the top of the oil in a container, and the oil then applies pressure to a sleeve piston that lifts the car. This is the same principle found when using a hydraulic jack at home. However, the smaller cylinder must travel much farther than the larger lift cylinder. This allows the lifting of the heavy load with a small force, as in an auto hydraulic life. 
Now in this slide we will discuss the implications of the Pascal Law. First is hydraulic braking system. One of the most common examples of Pascal's law is the hydraulic braking system present in the automobiles. The fluid transfers pressure from the control mechanism to the braking mechanism. On the right side you can see the major components of a hydraulics brake systems. When force is applied on the brake paddle, there is a movement of the piston and rod in the master cylinder. A liquid which is known as brake or hydraulic fluid, enclosed in the container, is used to transmit the pressure from the brake pedal to the wheels of the vehicle against the brake discs or brake drums. The frictional force between these force components causes the vehicle to stop. Hydraulic brakes are used in cars, motorcycles and lorries. Next application includes hydraulic lifts. It is a hydraulic apparatus which is used to lift heavy objects. It is based on the principle of equal pressure transmission throughout the fluid. Its applications are in the industrial, construction, transport is sector, etc. You can see the working mechanism of hydraulic lift. It has a narrow cylinder, A, connected to a wider cylinder, B, fitted with their tight pistons filled with an incompressible fluid. The mathematical representation of the Pascal's law helps in the determination of pressure which can be exerted on the fluid in the piston so as to create enough force for lifting and moving in objects. When pressure from piston A is transmitted to piston B, piston B lifts the heavy object like big machines, vehicles. Next implication is hydraulic jack. Hydraulic jack working is based on Pascal principle. The important components of a hydraulic jack are cylinders, a pumping system, and hydraulic fluid oil is used commonly when its handle is pressed down. A valve closes and a small piston forces the fluid through another valve to a larger cylinder which then produces a large force which then lift the car. Now in few slides we'll discuss about burden pressure gauge. Burden gauge is an instrument for measuring the pressure of gases or liquids of all kinds including steam, water, and air up to pressures of 100,000 pounds per square inch or 70,000 newton per square cm. It consists of following major parts, Burden tube, adjustable linkage, rack and pinion mechanism, segment lever. Burden tubes are known for its very high range of differential pressure measurement. The Burden pressure gauges used today have a slight elliptical cross section, and the tube is generally bent into a C-shape, while arc length of about 27 degrees. The detailed diagram of the Burden tube is shown in the figure. The basic idea behind the device is that, cross-sectional tubing when deformed in any way will tend to regain its circular form under the action of pressure. In this slide we will see how a Burden tube pressure gauge works. The open end of the tube is welded to a hollow mounting block which allows the pressurized fluid to reach the tube. This causes the pressure from the source to be transmitted directly to the inside of the burden tube. The applied pressure causes the oval tube to become rounder, since a round cross-section has the maximum area for a given circumference. As it becomes rounder, the burden tube tends to uncurl which causes its free end to move. This travel is suitable guided and amplified for the measurement of the internal pressure. But the main requirement of the device is that whenever the same pressure is applied, the movement of the tip should be the same and on withdrawal of the pressure the tip should return to the initial point. A system of linkages and levers transmits this motion to the gauge needle, which moves over the scale. The surrounding in which the process is carried out is also important as Corrosive atmosphere or fluid would require a material which is corrosion proof. The commonly used materials are phosphor bronze, silicon bronze, beryllium copper, inconel, and other carbon and chromium alloy, and so on. Now we will move toward our experimentation section. This is our board and gauge calibration unit. Burden gauge calibration apparatus consists of following main components. Burden pressure gauges, oil transmitting tubes, oil reservoir, fluid control valves, cylinder and piston mechanism, plunger rod and dead weights. 
The Borden gauges have two type of unit displayed on dial for pressure measuring. One is in bar and other in pound per inch square. The oil reservoir is connect to pressure gauges through oil transmitting tubes. The opening and closing of these tubes connecting to pressure gauges is governed by valves. In center of apparatus, there is a piston cylinder system. There is a lever which governs the movement of piston and cylinder. The cylinder is also connected to oil reservoir. When we rotate the lever an anti-clockwise piston moves outward and drains oil in the cylinder. And when we move lever in opposite direction it pumps oil back to the reservoir. The purpose of this whole procedure is to remove air pockets trapped in the oil. This unit enables us to study pressure measurement techniques using Borden type pressure and to study the principles of calibration. This unit introduces students to pressure, pressure scales and common devices available to measure pressure. It has dead weight pressure calibrator to generate a number of predetermined pressures connected to a Borden type manometer to allow their characteristics, including accuracy and linearity, to be determined. Now we will move on towards our procedure. The oil in the apparatus acts as working fluid. The oil from the oil reservoir is transmitted to the Burton gauges through connecting tubes. First of all note that the valves of connecting tubes are open, and note reading from Burton gauge, when no pressure is applied on the fluid. Now step by step we will apply pressure on fluid by using dead weights. Value of applied pressure can be calculated by pressure equal force divided by areas, whereas force is applied weight and value of A will be the area of plunger stem, that is 1 inch per square. Along every pressure applied there will be gauge of pressure reading. This will be the values for loading case. Now step by step unload the dead weight from the plunger, and note down the reading of gauge pressure. Now take mean of the loading and unloading gauge pressure values for every applied pressure value. If the value of mean gauge pressure and the applied pressure is same then gauge is no error. If the value of gauge pressure deviates from applied pressure then it means that the pressure gauge has error that error might be due to malfunctions in gauge or due to air bubbles in the oil fluid. Error across every applied pressure can be found by subtracting the mean gauge value and applied pressure value. Plot one graph between applied pressure and mean gauge pressure and one between applied pressure and errors and observe the graph trends. This is the table to note down the reading of the experimentation. The applied pressure is the pressure on fluid due to the dead weights. Their values are in pound per inch squared. So we will note the pressure due to dead weights on inch square area of plunger stem. I in loading column, we will note down the value of pressure gauge across every applied pressure. Similarly, we will note down the reading for unloading case from the gauge. In the mean column, you will take the mean of loading and unloading pressure across every applied pressure. To find out error we will subtract mean value from the applied pressure value. In this way we will be able to calculate error of Burton gauge in every reading.